it's currently my last day at Stanford before I leave for the summer and so much is happening right now. I have my last psych final today. Not to mention, I have to write a philosophy paper about the philosophical term bullshit. I also have to pack my room and I have to say goodbye to everyone that is still on campus. Literally just yesterday, I was talking to my roommate about how I just feel anxious. No matter what, in 14 hours, whether or not I'm ready, everything's going to be over. I should probably start studying for my psych final. Well, I have a little bit of time before I go grab lunch with a friend so I thought I would just sit down and explain the philosophy paper that I'm currently working on. So bullshit is a philosophical term coined by Harry Frankfurt and I'm supposed to use it as a lens to analyze some type of pop culture or some type of media. Probably the closest term that we have to bullshitting is lying but they're not the same and the difference is in the details. We probably have a pretty intuitive understanding of what lying is, but what really makes something a lie? Let's imagine I tell you that I have $20 in my pocket. And now let's say I really think that I have $20 in my pocket, but it turns out I actually have $23. Did I lie? Now, let's say I really think I have $23 in my pocket, but I tell you that I have $20. But after counting it, it turns out that I actually had $20 in my pocket. Did I lie? So what this example kind of points at is that when I make the statement, I have $20 in my pocket, there are two distinct things that I am trying to convey. One is that there is physically $20 in my pocket, and two, that I believe that there is $20 in my pocket. And the nuance there is really important because now we've made a distinction, the difference between saying something false and the intent behind our statement, whether or not we intend to tell the truth. So what if I say something false and I'm not really trying to say a truthful statement and I'm not even trying to convince you that what I'm saying is the truth. Is that a lie? Let's look at one more example that Frankfurt has in his essay on bullshit. He talks about an anecdote from Ludwig Wittgenstein and one of his associates. Wittgenstein visits his friend in the hospital and he asks his friend, how are you feeling? And his friend responds, I feel like a dog that has just been run over. And Wittgenstein is disgusted. He responds, you don't even know what a dog that has been run over feels like. Is Wittgenstein's friend lying to him? Their statement is technically false. Frankfurt would say no because Wittgenstein's friend is not even trying to tell the truth. They're trying to do something else completely. Wittgenstein's friend does not actually want Wittgenstein to believe that he literally feels like a dog that has just been run over. And this points to something really interesting, that we can say statements without intending for them to be true or false. And that is bullshit. Quote, Wittgenstein construes her as engaged in an activity to which the distinction between what is true and what is false is crucial, and yet as taking no interest in whether what she says is true or false. It's just this lack of connection to a concern with truth, this indifference to how things really are, that I regard as the essence of bullshit. Most conversations or acts of communication have this underlying assumption that the truth matters. That's why we feel so slighted when someone lies to us. But bullshit is when they don't even care if what they say is true or false. They are not even playing the same game as us. Like imagine if someone challenged you to a game of basketball and then suddenly they just started kicking the ball around and grabbing it and running around without dribbling. You'd be like, what the heck are you doing? You're breaking all of the rules. And that's basically what bullshit is. It's when a person who is standing on a basketball court, holding a basketball, wearing a basketball jersey, is not at all interested in playing the game of basketball. So yeah, I need to find a way to connect this to some medium in pop culture. Am I just eating? Yeah, yeah, yeah we're eating stuff. The year's wrapping up. Do you have any wise words you yeah. want to share with the, uh, with the audience? I have something to say. Alright, say it. What do I want to say? <laughs> Trust yourself. Wow. That's it. All 10 of my viewers will really appreciate that message. 10 of your viewers? Dude, there's like 100 of them right now. <laughs> This is the building that I'm taking my final exam in. I showed up 30 minutes early because I got the exam time wrong. So my flight leaves in about seven hours and I have not started packing my room yet. So the only thing that's really left for me to do is to start packing. Insert monologue over time lapse here. Time for my annual room cleanup.
the year is ending, I'm officially halfway through college. Looking back now, at the beginning of the year, parts of my current life were definitely unimaginable. But this year also wasn't like my freshman year, where everything and anything was new and exciting. Last year, I was meeting hordes of new people, throwing everything and anything against the wall to see what would stick, and I ended up forcing my round personality into a bunch of square holes. And no, that is not a euphemism for sex. Sophomore year felt more normal. Like I knew what I was doing, and also some of the shininess of college had worn off. College is kind of like one long four-year sleepover with your best friends, but it's also just school. Life has this tendency to be quite mundane. I worked a part-time job scooping ice cream. I went to classes, hit the gym, wrote, did homework, slept, played some board games. But I also made time to have more spontaneous adventures and to create some cherished memories. I saw the League of Legends World Championship Finals, which ended up being arguably the worst day of my life. Took weekend trips to Santa Barbara, went snowboarding in Tahoe a full three times. Yeah, the Icon Pass was definitely a waste of money. Drove 12 hours to the Grand Canyon, went to EDC. But even then, looking back now, it all just kind of feels normal. Because now, there are things that I did past tense and next year it'll be even more normal not to say that things need to be constantly new and exciting they don't but it's something i'm noticing i am living through all of the milestones that i'd once dreamed of and they're just kind of normal i used to watch tv shows and wonder who are my college friends going to be what are crazy college parties or raves going to be like what's it going to be like to move out on my own and it's hitting me that i've met my college friend group. I've picked what college I'm going to be going to. I've moved out. I don't get any other college experience than this. This is it. And that's just kind of crazy to me. This isn't a full thought. It's more of an observation. Time is passing. The school year is ending. Once again, the future has become the past without my permission. I'm anxious because it kind of feels like I'm being dragged off the edge of a cliff into this deep abyss called the future. But to distract me from that, here's a quick review of my favorite books and board games from the year. As I'm cleaning up my room, quick year, wait, quick, <laughs> quick year end book review. My two favorite books that I read this year, Nietzsche, yeah. you okay? <laughs> <laughs> Nietzsche, philosopher, psychologist, and antichrist. This is like a, a summation of a lot of Nietzsche's work. I think it's really cool. Second is a book series I'm currently reading, which is what my favorite anime is adapted from. It's also where I got my tattoo from. Year end board game review. My favorite board game of the year is a new one that we recently bought, Brass Birmingham. A runner-up and a close favorite. Personal favorite of mine, my roommate hates it. Everdell. Alright. Four hours later. Oh my god. I did it. I'm sorry the time lapse stopped. At some point in that, I just started getting really annoyed with packing and cleaning. And I was like, I hate this. I just want this to be over. This is the room before I bring everything out. Uh, these are all my boxes, and this is everything that used to be my room. I'll, uh, I'll let you guess what that is. I'm just kidding, it's salt. <laughs> this lighting is brought to you by the Mommy Missile. I'm just in my car because I know I have to store some stuff here while I'm gone. Uh, and so I figured now would just be a good time to film kind of like one of the last parts of this video. Um, damn. It's all hitting me that the school year is ending. But really, all that time packing gave me a lot of time to think about bullshit. Bullshit is everywhere, especially on YouTube. The other day, I was listening to the Colin and Samir podcast, and I saw this clip from the Try Guys. Sometimes we'll rearrange footage. Again, mm -hmm. I don't care what actually happened. I want to tell a good story. Seeing that made me feel kind of weird. The Try Guys' top priority is entertainment and not the truth. I know that, and I knew that. But still, hearing that felt like peeking behind the curtain in The Wizard of Oz. I couldn't help but feel like I'd been slighted somehow. Like when I watch Casey Neistat or Telly Wakasa, I don't think critically about whether or not the vlog that they're showing me is an authentic representation of their real life. I just assume it is. It's like how I can watch a horror movie and be completely engaged and terrified even though I'm safely sitting in a movie theater. It makes me think whenever I watch these vlogs about how many of these shots are bullshit. Like I feel like the famous vlog shot is walking past a camera from one place to another. It's like a very classic solid transition. And whenever I see it, I can't just help but think this vlogger walked to their location, set their camera down, walked back just to record themselves walking back to their location. That is absurd. Like what? But it also makes for much more engaging and entertaining transitions. If we're watching a good vlogger, <laughs> we are watching the most entertaining and engaging form of their day possible. They're not even trying to tell us the truth. They're just trying to entertain us. And that's bullshit. 
part of me doesn't even want to know how they're not telling me the truth. Like, when I saw that clip from the Try Guys, part of me just wishes I hadn't seen that. I can't not think about that now whenever I watch a video of theirs. Problems start to arise when we aren't aware of the amount of bullshit that we are consuming. And honestly, this is probably more of just a personal gripe about entertainment. Sometimes it feels like a lot of entertainment nowadays is really just trying to capture your attention to make you watch their videos. But it feels like not that many people are trying to say things of like substance or of real, real creative expression. They're the type of things that you binge watch without really liking. It's just easy. And to be clear, I'm not calling out anybody specific. The vloggers that I've mentioned, like Casey Neistat and Kelly Wakasa, they are easily some of my favorite YouTubers. They're honestly genuine inspirations of mine. And to be clear, I know that there is a lot of really, really cool and creative stuff happening. But sometimes it feels like all of that is being glossed over for bullshit. Because things that say something real or try to express something in a really novel way often aren't the easiest things to watch. They make you think a little bit more. They challenge the ways you see the world. And sometimes they're just a little bit hard to wrap your head around. But honestly, there's a much bigger problem that I think exists. But for right now, I am honestly running out of time. And then I'm going to be on the road and driving to SFO and finishing up my sophomore year of college. A year from now We'll all be gone All our friends will move away And they're going to better places But our friends will be gone away so most of the things in this video were absolutely bullshit. My last day on campus was June 14th and I'm filming almost all the speaking parts of this video in July. But the thing is with this video, I'm not trying to tell the truth. I'm trying to make an entertaining and engaging video. And obviously that's gonna be hampered by my personal ability to do that, but the idea is there. And even the parts of the vlog that I did record on June 14th, they were insanely edited. And this vlog really skips over the parts of my life that are really boring and really frustrating, like the four hours I had to spend packing. My studying was not time-lapsed over with a quick song. They were painful and long hours of just rote memorizing a bunch of random psych terms. Traveling from place to place is not always this upbeat, fancy transition with a song in the background. I have to lug a 10, 15 pound skateboard around. And this brings me to my final point of the video, which is the real problem of bullshit. We often model the ways we think our life should look off of what we see on social media. And these vlogs that we see are all insanely edited so that the lives of these influencers look vibey, vibrant, and upbeat. But that's not reality. And watching it, we might even begin to feel like our lives should look like that. And we might even begin to feel bad that they don't. And that's a problem because the lives that they show off aren't real. Not in some malicious, I'm trying to deceive you type of way. They're just trying to entertain and engage us. It's just important to realize what's happening because if we take in too much bullshit without realizing, we're going to be unwittingly led around by its stench. And we might never be aware that real life with all of its meaningful monotony and precious boredom is passing us by right in front of our eyes.